there, welcome to another episode of Inside the Women of Denver. If you're catching us for the first time, welcome! And if you're back for more, I'm so excited to see you again for another incredible interview session. I'm your host, Crystal Covington, and today we're talking revenue generation, water cooler relationships, confidence, and naked communication. Up first, let's get the show started with some tech talk. Our first guest spends her days designing websites that convert leads into sales. Veronica Kennedy is here to share the three critical components of a successful online strategy that gets your brand noticed while generating revenue. So we use the big R word, Veronica, revenue. And I know that's one of the biggest pain points for entrepreneurs to get their websites to actually make them money. It's usually an expense. So how do we make that happen? Right, so first let me thank you for having me on Women of Denver. I'm very excited to be here, Crystal. Yeah. And to make that website or that online marketing strategy an investment instead of an expense, which you can still write off on your taxes, it is the components that we really want to touch upon that often do get overlooked by small business and entrepreneurs are a clear call to action with your website functionality. We mm -hmm. tend to focus so much on the look and feel of our website, we really yeah. want to make sure that every part of that real estate is working for us and serving our customers. Absolutely. So what is the action step you want to take when your customers land on your website? Make it easy for them to engage with you and provide that value to differentiate yourself. Uh huh. So what is that value piece? What do you give them that makes them want to give their information up? An awesome piece of opt-in is something that they can really access right away. Something too laborious might be a big white paper. It can be more simple and fun. It can be an infographic. It can be a video, which is so powerful right now to convert. But something where people can really apply a simple tip. Don't make it too complicated. It's a free opt-in that they're willing to give their email address for, and it starts to warm up that relationship that gets expanded through your online presence. Nice. All right, what's your second tip? My second tip, often overlooked, is ranking. There are people right now looking for you and your services. Do you know how your website or your online presence, including your social media, who you are, you are your brand, if you are a service provider, how those things are showing up, you want to know. And if you take nothing else away, from this interview, there's a low-hanging fruit way to get started, and it's with Google Analytics. You can literally set it up yourself without being a techie. If you can log on to email, you can have this on your website. Start with the baseline so you know how it's performing, and I do offer a free tutorial on that. All right, and so ranking is one of the things that I've struggled with because I've seen, I was around in the early days when AOL was still a thing. <laughs> and, you know, you, you got, got mail. mail. <laughs> <laughs> And back then, getting a really solid ranking online started with having a whole bunch of keywords. And I knew people who actually made a lot of money by just having websites that had nothing else but a bunch of keywords on there, and then they would have ads. And I know that things have changed a lot. What is like one of the one keys that people can consider today, knowing that things have changed from that old spammy technique um, to kind of get their website to rank higher on um, so, uh, SEO, search mm -hmm. engine optimization. I'm so glad you, you, know, you, you asked that question, Crystal, mm -hmm. because so many are asking that question. And the reason people do nothing is because the steps they need to take aren't making sense to them. They don't understand what they're hiring for their website, why, or when it's going to produce. The most important thing when you're hiring any service is it's up to the customer service job of the consultant or the agency that it makes sense to you what is going to be done, why are we doing it, what are the results that you can expect to see. If the agency or the consultant has failed to provide that, don't be afraid to ask. You won't look stupid. It's part of empowering the revenue for your website and your business, and it's actually, you don't have to be a techie to understand it. So when you say what's the one thing that you can do, make sure that you understand the steps that are being taken because it is more complicated, not complicated, but there's more to it than just let's throw some keywords yeah. on your website and make sure that they rank. So when you are getting advised, understand the steps that are being taken as why. And I do want to answer your question, Crystal. Google now ranks for 
it ranks for content. So mm -hmm. if you are producing content and your website is a sales brochure, uh. then you know, you are positioning yourself as a thought leader and differentiating yourself. So it does help to have a content strategy that caters to the best keywords in the industry where you are an expert. Okay, good advice. Um, all right, well, thank you so much, Veronica, for sharing those amazing tips. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Crystal. <laughs> Thanks. Before you run off to tweak your website, stick around to learn how you can express your inner confidence. You know it's in there. I'm here with Dr. Melissa Gressner, a psychologist, speaker, and coach who helps people develop their inner core confidence. She's here to tell us how we can tap into our inner confidence for success in business and life. Dr. Gressner, should I approach you so formally? <laughs> you can call me Melissa. That's okay. what I tell all my clients. Okay, Melissa. <laughs> so confidence is a struggle for a lot of us, especially us women. Yes. I have personally struggled with that, and I don't even know where to start. So where do you begin to tackle such a challenging topic? Yes. Well, let me, since you mentioned yourself, first I'll say ambitious professionals tend to work and struggle with their confidence. It's oh. because they're so <laughs> ambitious, right? And when with our ambitions, we're always exposing ourselves to new challenging things. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, we're going to expose any anxiety or insecurities that yeah. we have. So it's a myth, really, that ambitious people are always strong and confident. Mm -hmm. They actually have to do work. I've done my work, too, um, to become more confident so that they can be more successful in life. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe I've found that in working with clients that core confidence is really being confident in who you are, both inside and out, and being able to really project it to the world. Yeah. So it was funny that you mentioned that, you know, trying all these new things can sometimes bring anxiety because that is yeah. something that I've had a struggle with and the fact that I think that that's where the imposter syndrome comes from. You keep doing something new and when you do something new, you haven't seen yourself in it. Yes. And you can't, you, you feel like you, you aren't that yet. So yes. you have to kind of teach yourself that you are that or you can be. You do. And at first, you know, many times it's believing, it's starting. And that's why I developed this program and uh -huh. a process called Core Confidence. Yeah. Um, so that people, it could be the foundation to work on that. It's also a myth that confidence is something that we're born with. Yes. Right? Confidence is something that's learnable adjustable and it's capable of reconnection because I've also found a lot that people maybe have had confidence but then they've got distracted mm -hmm. or they've had a new experience and then they feel insecure again so we can learn to reconnect and grow in that so yeah. it is a myth that people just have it it is something that we can learn to increase and develop in ourselves okay so what's one of the first steps to developing that core confidence for yourself Yes, so my, let me tell you just the quickly, the core confidence is an acronym, uh -huh. core, and so what that is, the first step is C. C is creating a positive and powerful mantra for uh -huh. yourself. O is orienting to the internal versus external. Uh -huh. R is about reconnecting to your mind, body, and soul. Uh -huh. And the last step is E, excelling with practice and application. Okay. Um, I could go on about all these steps much more <laughs> in depth, but really putting all these steps together, I've worked with clients and I found that when you do this all together, I do this in a process where we have introspective exercises, um, lots of reflection, mm -hmm. and it's a journey to kind of find one's confidence. Uh -huh. And so this is a process that I've worked on um, for several years now with clients. Hopefully one day a book, the forthcoming book that will be coming. I can't wait. Um, and so I really feel like just starting the process, um, you start uh, there. Okay. And I saw, I thought this was interesting that you do walking sessions with people. I thought that was really unique. <laughs> I do. Well, recently, that's a, that's a program I'm just rolling out and I've uh -huh. just recently started. So oh, nice. I'm excited as Denver gets more warm right now in the springtime um, to do more and more of. But walk-in talks are great because also we know that, I don't know if you're familiar with, the, familiar with this, excuse me, that being in nature and being outside is really kind of restorative and reparative. Yeah. For depression and anxiety. I'm a psych nerd, so yes. Okay. <laughs> and so, you know, it's great. I love talking to clients in my office, but it's really important to kind of get outside. And some people mm -hmm. are much more comfortable that way, too, yeah. um, to be walking side by side rather than sitting down in a more formal office kind of feeling. Nice. Well, I love the innovation there. Thank you. <laughs> Any last tips that you'd like to share with our viewers? 
the last tip, the kind of the takeaway I'd say is that a lot of people get really intimidated about change or even kind of the therapeutic process and mm -hmm. that change sometimes doesn't have to be this really big scary thing that I normally tell people to start with. It can be as simple as a light switch uh -huh. that you kind of can think of it kind of philosophically for yourself to as simple as I'm going to start changing today and you just switch it on. So sometimes when we make things more simple like that, mm -hmm. people are more motivated and they feel like it's more accessible. So really to kind of tell yourself that whether you're working alone or with a therapist, that change can really start um, anywhere. Wow, that's empowering. Okay, well, thank you so much for sharing those tips and for that empowering light switch that you just gave <laughs> us at the end. Good, thank you so much, Crystal. This was lovely. Thank you. Wow, confidence is just a step away with that action-packed advice. Now that you're feeling the glow of inner self-love, it's time for a little water cooler talk. Brick and mortar business is a rarity these days. So we're talking to Nicole about how she developed a successful co-working community where entrepreneurs form authentic relationships around the water cooler. Oh my gosh, I love being here. Thank you for having Women of Denver here. Yeah, <laughs> you created a really amazing community. And my first question for you is what everybody's probably wondering, which is how did you get this started? It's a big deal. It's a lot of help. Yeah. It definitely, <laughs> it takes a village. So um, with this journey, it started off with me wanting like, well, I need an office for my business, but I didn't want to be in this building by myself. Mm -hmm. I, I don't need all this. I had one employee at the time. Yeah. And I knew from living in North Denver that North Denver needed something. There wasn't any kind of office solution for entrepreneurs in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I put out an interest survey and I sent it out to moms groups, neighborhood organizations, business organizations. Uh -huh. and within a week we had 60 responses Wow! that said that yes we want to sign up and do this. So we started a crowdfunding campaign and went from there. Nice. So you clearly had a successful crowdfunding campaign which a lot <laughs> of people struggle to do and I bet it's because of all the buy-in that you had in the beginning and not kind of just starting from your own idea, but starting from something that you you created with the feedback from the community. Right. Yeah, and it definitely helped having my first business because that background in marketing and doing all the leads groups mm -hmm. and going to networking events, like building those relationships really helped get to this level. Yeah. Um, without all the people in the neighborhood, it wouldn't happen. Uh, we had a local brewery that did our crowdfunding kickoff party. Nice. They donated a percentage of their beer sales to us. Um, we had a local artist design some t-shirts. Uh -huh. So oh, yeah. um, the t-shirts themselves are landmarks in the neighborhood where we are. Oh, um, I didn't know so that. So we are in the Sunnyside neighborhood. And the name Sunnyside Station was actually voted on in our interest survey. Oh, so the neighborhood wow. named us. So... Um, sponsors um, so yeah we had a lot of involvement we had a kitchen yeah. um, designer she built the kitchen that was part of her in-kind sponsorship oh, so wow. without all these pieces like it wouldn't have happened we would I don't know where we, we would be so um, with that we had people that paid three months of membership in advance oh that's so amazing. that's how we were able to do our build out mm -hmm. um, we did a lot of just sweat work and sweat equity yeah, uh, like, like this, this wall, wall behind <laughs> us this is a pinterest win um my colleague julian and i we very carefully did that over course of a couple weeks um so yeah just little things and just getting advice from business advisors having a good real estate agent uh -huh. um having all these people provide their wisdom to make it happen so on the first yeah. day we had people here. We weren't just sitting here by ourselves building Love websites. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. So how do you keep the community going now that it's open? How do you keep people engaged and wanting con to continue spending time here? Right. Yeah. A lot of people come to us either from a home office or they're been working in a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And their main complaints are that they're tired talking to their cat, <laughs> their dishes, you know, that becomes priority. They can't get any work done or mm -hmm. there's kids. Um, so they they know when they come here, it's not a library. It's not completely quiet. Yeah. Um, to expect people to ask you like, Hey, you're a new face here. Um, what do you do? Like conversations, like when you're in a coffee shop, you might be surrounded by people, but you're mm -hmm. all alone. Yeah. Right. You don't, unless you go to that coffee shop every day and you're the kind of person that's like, you know, maybe I'll go talk to that person that looks really <laughs> unfriendly, <laughs> but I'm really lonely. Like people here know, like you should expect someone's going to talk to you yeah um, so it's 
It's interesting. We actually had a member that did a crowdfunding campaign here for his business, uh -huh. and the whole group like rallied behind him. So it was pretty interesting. Like That's it's amazing. it's always something. Like we have a monthly networking event that we do, and uh -huh. it's very casual. Like we don't have a speaker. It's kind of like come, have lunch, hang out, eat. If you make some business connections, great. If not, you've made a friend. And I mean, I've seen a lot of people. It's like, oh, this is a really great lunch. I just met with so and so. Mm -hmm. and it's not forced. Yeah. So it's not like, okay, you have to do this. Like, there's right. something for everybody. And if you can't make the event, you're going to come to work and someone's going to talk to you while you're making your coffee. <laughs> and you're going to know, like, hey, how's it going? Oh, you know, everyone knows everyone here. Yeah. Um, we have, I think, about 40 people and they all know each other. They're on first name basis, whether wow. they're here once a week or full time. Yeah, I so. came here one time on a weekend and I was just trying to work and somebody started chatting with me and I just said, okay, well, I guess this is the time to meet someone new. <laughs> and we had a great conversation. Right. <laughs> People get work done. They're more productive because yeah. they get that out of the way. Whereas uh -huh. if you're home, you're going to be like, what's on Facebook? You know, yeah. oh, I should check my phone. Right. Right. But here it's like you get inter human interaction. Yes. Get out of and the way. You get business done. And get inspired. You make connections. Like uh -huh. someone's like, oh, I need to talk to the bookkeeper who's here. Oh, well, she, she sits right next to me. Everyone knows oh, her. Oh, nice. You know, or, oh, there's a dog walker. I can talk to her, you know. So there's all kinds of backgrounds. And people ask, well, who do you have as members? It's anybody. Because, I mean, it's, it's a neighborhood. So Beautiful. we're a neighborhood space. I love it. Well, I love being here. I love the story of how you started. And I'm so glad that you came to share it with us today. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. I know you're ready to start drafting plans for a brick and mortar hotspot, but don't hop up just yet because we're about to get naked. Sage Hobbs is an author, coach, and speaker who teaches people to courageously connect so they have the relationships they deeply crave. Her book is called Naked Communications, and today we're going to learn exactly what that means and why you should get naked to have the life you really want. That was a bold intro, right? <laughs> I know. I a love introing you. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about what Naked Communication is. Sure. So Naked Communication, the title was born in the middle of nowhere on a 5,000 mile road trip with my kids <laughs> and my husband. And I've been writing this book and writing this book and I still couldn't come up with the title. And I'm talking to my husband about like, you know, what it's about and what the entire soul and purpose of this conversation is. And he's like, it's naked. That's mm -hmm. what it is. That's what it's about. It's about peeling back the layers of conditioning and patterned behavior and automatic ways of being so you can really show up as your more most authentic self in mm -hmm. all the areas of your life, right? Yeah. And what I have found through my life experience and my history um, professionally is that there really is one thing that everybody wants more than anything else, and that is to have relationships that really matter. Yeah. Like at the end, there's research about it, even at, in people's dying moments, right? They want to have loved deeply and been deeply loved. That's actually what they're looking to be surrounded with. And um, the, the avenue to that level of intimacy and connection really is around how you communicate, how you show up in the world, how mm -hmm. you present yourself. So naked communication is about getting out of your own way so you can be really clean, clear, compassionate, and ultimately courageous in every conversation you have. So as you were talking, I was just thinking of this um, study that I read where it was talking about how People who are the loneliest, people that mm -hmm. have the most anxiety and depression, will often push themselves, push other people away. So it's like when we want those relationships the most, that's when we push them away the most. Mm -hmm. How do we mm -hmm. people fight that and you know have that authenticity? It's su that in those situations, it's super hard, right? I have yeah. a background in counseling psychology, so I spent ten years as a trained therapist working with teens and families. And when people start to retreat into an actual spell of depression or anxiety, yeah. it can be really hard to pull oneself out of it. But there is, like, the naked is, we all came out of the womb naked, right? And we all came out mostly fully self-expressed. That's uh -huh. how we came out. You know, I always think of babies as having, like, pure potential. So most people respond to babies like, oh, my God. I know. No matter how we get big authentic. and gruff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We get, you, exactly. Yes. So I think that when you can tap into that with people who are struggling with depression or anxiety, like when you can tap into that essence, it's still inside of them, you know? And sometimes it's small risks, small actions. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to start with the biggest, most courageous conversation where you go tell your boss you want to take a sabbatical or you tell your husband you want to leave him. You don't have to start there. Right. You know, you can start with like asking the mailman about their day, which oh. for some people is like a big radical idea. Like this, so my kids laugh at me because... I get into relationship with everyone all the time, no matter where we are. <laughs> and, 
you know, sometimes it's a little embarrassing to them because I'll just be chatting up the guy like at uh -huh. the counter or whatever. But honestly, what I think they're learning from that is that you can have that kind of natural um, shared common humanity mm -hmm. with anyone if you practice. And okay. so you can start with those smaller interactions if that's a risk for you. And it pays off like tenfold. Like we, case in point, we were down at the Jersey Shore last summer because I'm from Philly originally. Oh. And we went to park. <laughs> yeah. And um, the lot was full by the boardwalk. We go to the boardwalk for like one day. The kids uh -huh. love it. And um, funnel cake, the whole shebang. Oh, and stuff. it's full. I know, it's so good. <laughs> and um, I'm like, no. I'm talking to, the, talking to the guy at the little booth, and he's like, it's full. And, you know, he said, well, you know, where else can we park? We always park here. I don't know. And how, you know, I'm just chatting with him. He goes, do you want me to move the cone? And you can just see if there's a spot. And I'm like, oh, wow. Sure. We go and turn off one spot, you know. And I said, thank you so much. Oh, the my gosh, you're awesome. The value of a yes. conversation. And so he and he was psyched because honestly, it's pretty lonely to stand there and just like give people tickets all day long and feel mm -hmm. like nobody sees you as a human being. <laughs> so it was just this like beautiful example of it can start with small interactions. So if you're mm -hmm. struggling, little steps, much like what was mentioned earlier with confidence. Um, if you take small actions to connect more meaningfully with people in your life, you'll find that it gets easier to do so. Yeah. And it's huge. I mean, those relationships sometimes. Um, you know, you don't realize how how some uh, how what you would think is a small relationship. There's somebody mm -hmm. that you banter with here and there. It can turn into something so much bigger. And that person might be, you know, the one that if you had a will, you put them in as the person mm -hmm. to, to take care of your children or you know have the money that you leave behind. So, absolutely, it's you so you really great. don't know. Yeah. And of course, this pertains like with the clients that I work with and the groups that I run for women. Mm -hmm. It pertains. People want to feel connected. Women want to feel connected to each other. There's yeah. like, I think there's a real desire for community and with social media and all these other things. While in some ways that helps us be more connected, there's ways in which it creates separation. Right. And people are longing for much like this brick and mortar space we're in. They're they're longing for human connection. So people come to work with me, who really want to show up more powerfully in all areas of their life, from their marriage to their child to the you know, as parents, as moms, yeah. and in friendship, mm -hmm. like in the spirit of sh shared experience. And so that's what Naked is about, really like peeling it back. Okay. So what's the first step for everybody that's watching that they can start being a little more naked in their communication? The first step truly is knowing yourself better. You know, it really, the relationship with yourself, it sounds cliche, but you have to start there because that's where you actually have the most power to elicit change mm -hmm. and to transform the relationships in your life. So. In the book, I talk about really looking at what kind of communication style do you have, what's the most natural for you, and where is that working for you, and where is it not? Ah, okay. Because while being assertive can have its great moments, it can also really be a turnoff depending on the person or the environment. So the first step is really to examine, like, how are you currently showing up in the world? And is it a match, an authentic match for how you want to show up in the world? Once you can get more familiar with your own patterns and behaviors, you can start having awareness and with awareness comes choice. Uh -huh. Beautiful. That's where I would start. Well, thank you so much for those tips. Hand me a copy of your book. Yeah. All right. You can find out more. There's some free resources on my website. This is what the book looks like. Get a little quiz on your communication style and you can get free chapters there too. Nice. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing with thank us. Thank you so much for having me on. <laughs> what an amazing lineup of super boss experts. I'm so glad we got to talk to these women today, but what's most important is that you were here to enjoy it with us. I want you to always remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known. Be sure to check us out at thewomenofdenver.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. I'll see you next time.